Hello there, my name is Ingus from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be trying something oldish, very old PLC and that is Mitsubishi FX Series first PLC, look at the chunky of this, this is a one beefcake but believe it or not these PLCs are still very very commonly used, I've been selling them for years and they are still in very high demand so I thought why not, let's make a video of how do we get the program in and out, how the inputs and outputs work, general gist as usual. And the kit we're going to be using today is again my trusty Panasonic CF53 laptop which comes with RS-232 port. Even the newer versions of these if you're interested the CF54 and oh no, this is 53, 54 and 55 they are still, the 55 is actually the latest one, the 55 is still coming out with RS-232 ports because these guys who manufacture these uh, laptops, they understand that there's still so many PLCs out there that still require RS-232 port and they make sure that that port is in their laptops and obviously the cable we're going to be using today is again a SC09 cable it's a standard original Mitsubishi programming cable for FX series PLCs, it goes all the way to FX3 and, and the only thing in here we're going to need to do, as you can see down there, is a separation. This usually is usually is coming like that. So what we do, we remove the plug that is made for FX1, 2 and 3. And that plug becomes usable for FX first. Well, I would say nil PLCs. So I think there's one before, but I can't remember what name was that or that was. That's pretty much what we're going to do. Now this one's obviously the other end is RS-232. But for demonstration today, if you don't have RS-232, again, all the part numbers of all the kit I'm going to be using today are going to be in the description below. If there's going to be some manuals, if I find anything useful that could uh, assist you with, uh, with, with this PLC, I will put it down, but I think it will be hard to find those manuals. But I'm going to be using this uh, RS-232 to USB converter. This has actually been, believe or not, certified by Mitsubishi itself, but I'm definitely keen to have a look at how that works just in case you don't have that RS-232 port for your a laptop and the programming software you're going to need it's going to be a GX developer and the one version I'm going to be using is GX developer version 8 I believe and I'm pretty sure the earlier ones will work on this PLC as well so Let's get to it and then have a look how that works. And before we go, and if you like the video, smash that like, subscribe, and uh, great, uh, great to help out the video. So let's get to it. Alrighty, look at this chunky beast. Comparing to the exact replica which you are able to uh, replace with. Look at the size, that and that. That is some one ass big PLC. But anyway, uh, pretty much this is a DS version which is uh, run by 24 volt DC supply. So that's exactly what I've done down here. And you can see down there, it's again, like all the other Mitsubishi PLCs, he's got this SS where the neutral part of the power supply would go. You can use the external. I'm gonna be using the internal and uh, I did do in the other videos how that external works. So I'm using internal, so I'm taking the zero volts from uh, from here, transferring into SS, and then I'm taking 24 volts from here, where I can test all my inputs. And for that, let's just power the PLC up. As you can see, PLC goes on, and you can put a run mode if you wish, but we don't need to go run mode. And not sure you're able to see the little lights. I hope you are. Well, if you zoom in, you probably will. That's how I would go around and test, make sure all my inputs are working and as you can see all of them are pretty dead on i'll tell you one thing for the age of this plc by me these plcs last forever and as i said there's still high demand for them because there's still so many machines use them so uh, that's pretty much how the uh, inputs will be wired obviously this wire here which comes out 24 watt could go on any switches sensors and blah 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 and it's just when they click when they switch they send the signal back to the inputs and then all the logic happens inside and things like that. And I'll put this uh, outputs again, it's the same as the other PLCs. Load of columns in here. Each comp represents a group of Ys. So uh, 
each uh, each comp can be different volts and blah 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 how we said already in the last video so it's just fairly straightforward but usually when you would uh, go to connect uh, go to this plc you would go pretty much uh, just to change over or uh, or uh, replace them as, as a, a like for like so uh for the purpose for the, to connect the cable to it let me just grab it uh, connect the oh, dropped it for the connect the cable we take the you take a part and we just plug it in there and it fits perfectly so this is where you would plug in uh, that one and the other end which i have my rs232 which is down here i'm gonna be adding on here so just think, again if you've got rs232 system don't bother with that that's easier the rs 22 will be easier but if you don't have and you just have a laptop it doesn't have any rs 22 uh in the link be in the link below uh, in the tool, in the description below you'll be able to find the part number for this this cable because i said this is this was certified by mitsubishi so it is guaranteed to work so let's get to laptop and see how we can get program in there uh, in and out and uh, then run some outputs Alrighty, now the laptop is all set up and ready to go. GX developer is loaded. I'll quickly talk you through about this installation of this uh, USB thing that we've got in here, which is it. It 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 it's uh, it's one of these. It's a manufactured by uh, Aten and it's a very or whatever whatever you call it. It comes with its own CD with the drivers. All you need to do is follow the very perfectly good instructions in here. It tells you exactly how to connect things up, but I'll quickly show you what happens when, when, when you get, got your drivers going. So let's unplug my USB. So this is at the moment how the connection looks like when you have the USB. So uh, when you click on, uh, when you connect your USB, let's just look at this thingy. Back in, oop, oh, I think it moved. So once you plug it in, you sort of need to know what COM is using. So for that, you should have a little window in here with a little USB on here. At least in my system is like that. Unless, uh, other than that, just go in uh, the, the hardware and uh, uh, something like that. I can't really, I can't remember what it was. But, but usually I have an icon like that. When you go in there, open a, uh, yeah, it's open a devices and printers. You can go the different ways as well. And then at least you can see, it shows you the where the, you can see down here, where uh, my USB serial bridge is connected, and that, and that says it's, it's, it's going through COM8. So in a GX developer, you will need to select that. So uh, if you go to GX developer and then go to online, I'm already connected to the PLC, so uh, that's all good there. So just click read from PLC, and then obviously it's, of course it's FX series PLC. And in here, uh, go to this one, double click it, and select, uh, leave that RS-232C, because that's what exactly, what exactly what you're still using, and go to select what COM you're using. So I'm using number 8, so I press OK. And then let's read what's inside the PLC. So now it's going to connect to it. You have to wait. This is an old PLC, it's got a bit of waiting. There we go, as you can see, it's already connected to it. Now it tells you what you want to do. And I'm just going to say, I just want a main program. And execute. Uh, yes. Remember, this PLC doesn't have automatic uh, turn off from run to stop. So uh, may, please make sure this PLC is in uh, start mode. Otherwise, I think it's going to believe it's going to uh, throw an error to you. So uh, make sure that. Uh, that is in off mode, so here we go, that's done. And that way, ladies and gentlemen, now you can see what is inside the actual PLC. So that's how you would download the program out of the FX series, the old FX series PLC. And believe it or not, later on I'm gonna be doing a series how to convert to newer type of using this, this these softwares you can actually take this program and convert it to, to, to a newer version of the PLC, but that's a subject for the different time. But now it's just a download and upload.
So that's how you download. And uh, let me just quickly wipe the memory now. If you go for the online and declare PLC memory, we don't need anything in there. Might as well get rid of it. Let's PLC memory, uh, data, and uh, bit devices execute. And this way is pretty much going to wipe the whole thing clear. Hopefully, it's not going to take too long. I know, remember, it is an old PLC. It takes a bit longer time. Oh, here we go. That was quick. So that way we have uh, cleared the PLC memory. And if you go again and uh, online and read from the PLC, come on. And uh, let's just have a look at the main. There should be nothing in there, should be able to do that quite quickly. Come on. Oh wow, he's taking his time. Alright. Come on. Not sure why you don't want so much in there now. There we go, thank you very much. And as you can see already in the background, the PLC is empty. And for the fun of it, let's download in our one program. So we need to go to uh, the edit and we need to go in the write mode. And let's write a very basic, as usual, like I did in other PLCs. Let's say X1. And let's say we operate uh, Y0. Actually, let's change that one to X0. X0. So, as usual, you need to convert it. So, convert. PLC is, uh, I mean, the software is happy with what's been done. And then we go online and then we write the PLC. So, uh, why is all than that? We can't load comments in there anyway. So, execute. And let the uh, program do its business. Here we go. Sending that all inside the PLC. And that's pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Uh, get the program out and get the program in or of old FX series PLC. It's very straightforward. It's actually as, as simple as you can get. Exactly the same as the other PLCs. The only thing is you have to use the, the, the wider serial port that is coming with the SC09 cable. So uh, let's quickly have a look and test our outputs with it as well. Oh, now we're back to PLC. And let's unplug this one. We no longer need that one. So that's pretty much program is done in there. And have a look at it. If uh, let's put it in a run mode. Let's close this one up. I and mean, hopefully you should be. Let me just turn this around a little bit. You should be able to. Let's, which one did we do? We did the X, which is this one. As you can see, my contactor is already. Ooh. There we go. Simple as that. So there's nothing really complicated about this PLC, and it's very, very much, uh, very much straightforward. I got my 24 watts coming in here, and a Y01 switch is the one we already did in the program. Switches. The logic inside the PLC sends a 24 watt to conductor, and pretty much that's all there is. And from there on, the world is just full of magic. You can create all sorts of things uh, with it as much as you wish. There is just uh, so much you can do with the PLC program. And again, I'm the engineer more on the service side of it, replacing, upgrading, or a couple of changes in the program things. Like I don't do programming. I, I do. I do enough programming. What I need but nowhere near to the level that uh, some of these guys, they create these complex uh, functions in those, uh, in those PLCs. So that will be it for this video. Hopefully this is helping you out and then uh, making you a bit more understand how the older versions work. As I said, nothing too complicated. If you liked the video, please like, and uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.